spotlight for President Biden and White House staff over the mishandling of classified information and lack of transparency. CNN senior political commentator Adam Kinzinger joins us now with more. So Adam, Reuters' uh, Jeff Mason says this probe, quote, has neutralized Democrats' ability to target former President Trump. Former Obama advisor David Axelrod calls it a huge gift to Trump. What's your take? Yeah, I think they're right. It's a huge gift. So there's the legal side and there's the political side. The legal side will be, the legal side can do nuance. They'll be fair. They'll go through, you know, the, the Donald Trump thing, the Joe Biden thing, and go after it the right way. Politically, uh, basically this has taken out, I think, almost any ability for Democrats to go after the former president on this issue. Still, There is still a January 6th thing that happened, which I think is important to keep in mind. And uh, it, it's really a bad but the, the, the other thing is, and I think one of the biggest problems has been the continuing rev revelation of new documents. And they've not done a good job of putting together how that happened. Are they continually finding new batches? Did they happen upon it? And uh, I think politically it's pretty bad at the moment. Yeah, when they released the first statement talking about the batch in November, it failed to mention the second batch that was found in December. So then they had they reporters found out about it. They released another statement. So there are certainly um, fair questions about a lack of transparency from the Biden White House. But let's listen to what House Oversight Chairman James Comer said to me in November regarding the classified documents found at Trump's residence in Mar-a-Lago. I don't know much about that. That's not something that uh, we've requested information just to see what was going on because I don't know what documents were at Mar a Largo. Uh, so, you know, that's something we're just waiting to see what comes out on that. But is it fair to say that investigation won't be a priority? That will not be a priority. Okay, so that was about Trump. And now this is what he said earlier today about the Biden investigation. At the end of the day, my biggest concern isn't the classified documents, to be honest with you. My concern is how there's such a discrepancy in how former President Trump was treated by raiding Mar-a-Lago, by getting the security cameras, by taking pictures of documents on the on the floor, by going through Melania's closet versus Joe Biden. They're like, okay, you, you're, you're personal lawyers who don't have security clearance. You know, they can go through, they can just keep looking and keep looking and, and you know, determine whatever's there. That's not equal treatment. What do you make of that? Well, first off, thank you for keeping that and playing it, because I think this is very important for people to see is, frankly, the hypocrisy that exists. Um, and secondarily, it's a very different situation. I think a lot of people forget that Mar-a-Lago was raided only after repeated engagements with the government. They said, we know you have this. They know they've moved it. They've said we don't have it. And that's what led to this. So it's a different situation, but as Mr. Comer is, is, is doing and, and doing quite well, if you throw enough stuff on the wall, um, it creates a lot of confusion. But, but I think the bottom line is anybody, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat talking about this issue, you should be consistent with what you said about Donald Trump as well. There are differences, you can note that. But this is one of the things that drives me and I think a lot of Americans crazy is open, obvious, and almost a disregard for whether or not something you say is uh, not consistent with what you say with a different party. Just be consistent, uphold the law. We can't have classified information out there and investigate Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Right, and that was, I remember when Republicans came out so strongly defending Trump at that time, it was notable. And then here you are in a situation where the same thing is happening with President Biden in terms of um, classified documents being not where they should be. And suddenly they've had to change their tune, right? And so it is interesting and important to note, you've had some pretty dire things to say about the future of your party, especially after the speaker fight and I'm curious, have you ever considered switching parties to become an independent? I mean, those are kinds of thoughts you go, frankly, go through my head all the time about, you know, what is the future of the Republican Party? What's, you know, how do I identify when it comes to the politics of this? I'm still a believer that, look, I think even though things are still continuing to go off the rails with the Republican Party, there are signs with the lessening of Donald Trump's influence, although I think people have learned Trumpism there is signs that some of this may eventually burn itself out. And so I'll, I'll never say I, I quit considering it because for me, 
And I think that's how most Americans feel is like, you just want to be represented by somebody. And in, in, in my case, the Republican Party has certainly felt like it's left me. I haven't changed my policies, my beliefs or anything. I just believe in truth and I believe in being committed to truth and consistency and honesty. And that's where I feel a little homeless in the Republican Party sometimes. But you still identify as a Republican. What would be the final straw for you? I think it's like when it happens, that'll be the final straw when you know, you know, look, it's we are still a country represented by two political parties, generally. Obviously, there's minor parties. And uh, I think the Republican Party still deserves a fight for the soul of it. But, you know, at the same time, I think most Americans feel like I'm kind of tired of voting for lesser of two evils. And so right now I'm enjoying not being in Congress. And uh, I'll continue to evaluate that with myself every day. Well, let's talk about a Republican that is in Congress right now, and that would be the New York Congressman uh, George Santos, who has lied about his identity. Uh, the voters put him in office based on a, a, an identity that he made up, and we're getting more and more evidence of everything he made up, it seems like, by the day. Here is the latest example. This was a radio interview he did um, where he fabricated playing on a volleyball team, going to Baruch College, and getting surgery. Let's listen. You know, it's funny. I actually went to school on a, on a volleyball scholarship. And, you did? And wow. I did, yeah. Um, when I was in Baruch, we were the number one volleyball Did you graduate team, from Baruch? Uh, did you graduate from there? Yeah. So did I. I did. I did. So did I. Oh, very cool. So, great school. Great institution. Very yes. liberal, but very good. I, look, I sacrificed both my knees and got very nice knee replacements, uh, knee replacements oh, from wow. HSS playing volleyball. That's how serious I took the game. <laughs> Again. A lie. Your thoughts. And he's still serving, by the way. And, so and Kevin scary, McCarthy, but... oh, go ahead. I just want to note to our viewers, he is still serving. Kevin McCarthy has said he has no plans to, to you know, ask him to resign. But go ahead. Although other Republicans have. Yeah. I mean, look, Kevin can't ask him to resign because Kevin needs his vote as it is right now. I, I really worry about the Republicans' ability to pass anything. I worry about the country's ability to pass something through the debt limit. Um, this guy is not just expanding his resume. He's not lying about some things. I mean, truthfully, he is a total, utter fraud. And his election in front of the people of New York was fraudulent. He presented himself as somebody he wasn't. Look, I don't think he, I, I, I don't think he can make it two years in Congress just personally. I mean, Congress can kick him out, by the way. Congress can certainly censure him. Majority, right. it, yeah, yeah, there has to be a big majority. And I think if Kevin came out and was for it, they would do it. But Kevin McCarthy needs his vote. This, I feel bad for the 700,000 people in New York that he represents that he utterly, absolutely, completely lied to. So then, okay, so, so clearly you have issues with him, but what is your message to Kevin McCarthy then about this? Well, I mean, if, look, if I was there, I'd tell Kevin we have, to, we have to ask him to leave. We have to ask him to resign. Look, his own party back in New York has said we want him out. I think, you know, if Kevin came out and said this and the leadership of the GOP and the House said it, he would maybe he still wouldn't resign. But I certainly think the pressure would be there. Look, my party has a problem with telling the truth. This is not helping that reputation. And uh, that's what 